Okay, so find a comfortable seated position. Close your eyes and begin tuning your attention inwards. So just for the next few moments, try to let go of the day, anything that has happened, anything you've got planned for the weekend. So none of this matters anymore. All that matters is what's happening breath by breath and moment by moment. So three points of mindfulness. Connect with your physical body. Check how you're feeling right now. If you encounter any tension during your body scan, see if you can soften that part. So not exactly running away from the sensations or discomfort, but simply sitting with anything that arises in the space of your consciousness. And feel your breath. Without trying to change its natural rhythm, just allow it to flow and give your body permission to grow still. And then take a snapshot of your headspace, how you're feeling emotionally. So at this point, we're simply shifting our attention from the external world, from everything outside of us that is vying for our attention, and focusing on the inner experience, however subtle, however deep. With each inhalation, allow your spine to lengthen and feel light, as though you could lift yourself a few inches of the mat as you breathe in. And breathing out, grow heavy. So plug yourself into the earth. Connect with that rooting energy. Start deepening your inhalations and lengthen your exhalation. Set an intention for the practice. So this month we're still working with the hips. So if you find it frustrating, perhaps you can say, I'm accepting, I'm accepting of myself, of my body. So whatever it may be, allow it to guide you through the practice. So just a simple reminder of why you're here. And there are no right or wrong answers. And let's take one cleansing breath together. So take a deep breath in. And then hold it for five, four, three, two, one. Exhale through the mouth, letting it all go. Then do three head rolls, whichever way you like, just to Gauge what's happening in the shoulders and the neck and bring some mindful movement to gently reawaken the body and prepare. After three times, switch direction. And come back to the center. So remove any props. If you are using to sit, bring the legs in front of you slightly wider than your hips and you can hold either underneath the thighs or in front of the shins, moving through cat cow. So as you inhale, push the chest through, lift the chin up 
And as you exhale, round your back and feel the tilt in the pelvis. So twice more, breathe in, push and lengthen. And then as you exhale, squeeze your belly, round your upper back. One more time, inhale. And exhale. Then keeping that mild engagement, use the control of your core to slowly lower yourself all the way down and stay in constructive rest pose. And just feeling where the body comes in contact with the mat. Feel the weight of your body. Draw the right knee in towards your chest and extend through the left leg and allow it to hover above the mat. So just notice how it feels in the hips. So both between the right leg, the deep hip flexion, the extension in the left hip. Perhaps you can feel something happening in your hamstrings and the back of the leg. And then switch. So if at any point you find any of the variations a little bit too much, you can always adapt. Then remember, it's always okay to change your mind. Draw the lower belly in, keep the Uddiyana Bandha. And then we're gonna switch. So one breath at a time, switch the legs. Each time you extend the opposite leg, try to keep her above the mat. And as you bring the knee in, give it a nice little squeeze. So you're energetically opening the hips. So one leg is extending through the hip, the other one is closing it. Just one more round this way. And then bring both knees in. Just a little squeeze, maybe rock from side to side. You can either do the version that we've just done or extend your right leg up, the sole of the foot is facing towards the ceiling and then the left leg is extended but still hovering above the mat. So here already we're using the core to support the structure. So hold the back of the right leg and maybe if it feels good you can slightly bring it in, pushing out through the back of the foot both feet really, <laughs> and hold it here, and then switch. So pause to observe how both sides are feeling, which part of the body is working the hardest, and find your breath. So keep it still deep and long, finding balance between effort and ease. And then switching, so inhale, bring the right leg up, give it a nice little squeeze. And then next, inhale, switch. So work with your breath, trying to recruit the deep abdominal muscles to bring the legs, leg as close to the chest as you can, rather than just using the strength of your arms. So it's all about combining the effort and that helps you build dynamic flexibility. So just one more time. And then bring both legs up. So flex the feet or point, see what feels better, squeeze the knees together. Press your lower back into the mat and allow the femur bones to sink deeply into the hip socket. So notice the engagement that's required here. So follow your breaths flow. And then bend your legs, give them a squeeze and roll yourself up and over the legs into tabletop. So ground down through the fingertips, the knuckles, the heels of the hands 
and also press the mat away so you're stabilizing through the shoulder joint moving through cat cow so inhale extend through the spine root look up and exhale round your back twice more breathe in and out inhale and exhale come back to neutral if you can bring the fingertips to point towards your knees you can bring yourself a little bit closer stay with your toes tucked see what works for you pressing down through the fingertips you begin to shift your hips towards your heels and then lift up so find any little movements that feel appropriate because if your wrists and the forearms are tight it's going to feel really intense so be gentle as you shift the hips just gauging what's going on keeping the breath deep and long relaxing through the shoulders and then lift your hips up and turn your wrists <laughs> Prepare for down dog, tuck your toes under and as you inhale, shift the hips up. So bend one leg and straighten the other. Connect to the back of your legs, the back of your hips. And then settle in your down dog. Remember about the external rotation in the shoulders. Draw your belly button in closer to the spine. And then everyone bend your knees and then roll the sits bones up, lifting them super high. Stay on the balls of your feet and then gently keeping that alignment. Focus on melting through the heels down. I'm going to stay here for three breaths. Allow it to be deep and full. And top of the thighs is engaged. And then walk your hands towards your feet. So one hand at a time, moving slowly, feeling what's going on in the hands, the shoulders, the legs. Make your way into ragdoll. So bend your legs if you need to. Bring the chin towards your chest. Allow the body a few moments just to settle and then maybe now you feel like straightening the back of the legs. Gently shake your head, yes, yes, no, no. And then inhale, lift up halfway, flat back, reach out through the crown of the head, exhale, fold. Breathing in, roll yourself all the way up, sweeping your arms over the head. Exhale, Tadasana Samastiti He. Arms by your sides. Inhale, arms over the head. And exhale, leading with your chest, come into a fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, roll all the way up, extended mountain. And exhale, Samastiti He, release your arms. So one more half sun salute. Inhale, extend. And exhale, fold, folding at the hips. Inhale, half lift. And exhale, fold. This time grab hold of your big toes with your peace fingers. Inhale, wave length through the spine. And as you exhale, fold more deeply. So elbows go out to the sides. Just testing our flexibility here. 
using the deep core muscles to fold more deeply. And the shoulders away from your ears. And then inhale, lift up halfway, release your toes, and then slowly, one hand at a time, walk yourself into plank. Push the mat away, gently protract your shoulders, use your entire body to lift up, and breathe. Keep the pelvic floor muscles engaged. And then drop your knees down. So what we're gonna do from here, shift forward and lead with the shoulders, drop down into Chaturanga. So the shoulders are in line with the elbows. And then lift the knees off the mat. Drop the knees, push back. So straighten the arms. Like a little flow to get your shoulders used to proper chaturanga alignment. So we've got two more to go. So shift forward, drop your shoulders, chaturanga, your toes remain tucked. Then straighten the legs. So lift your knees off the mat, drop the knees down, straighten the arms, coming back into tabletop. That's it. Right, so let's do it one more time. Shift forward, drop down chaturanga, Elbows are in, lift the knees off the mat, drop them down and push back. That's it. Sink your hips down, extend the child's pose, walk your fingertips towards the short edge of the mat. So you can feel a stretch around the shoulder blades. If you've eaten too much, <laughs> keep the knees apart <laughs> to create some space for them belly and the chest to drop down. Just a couple of breaths here. And then inhale, lift up halfway, tuck your toes, exhale into down dog. Breathing in, walk your hands towards your feet. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up to extended mountain. Exhale, hands at heart. Inhale, extend it. Exhale, into a fold. Inhale, half lift. And exhale, fold. Inhale, walk your hands into plank. Exhale, Chaturanga of your choice. I'm going to hold it for two breaths. Squeeze the elbows in, use your entire body to lift up. And then inhale into Cobra or Up Dog. Open through the chest. Exhale, roll back into Down Dog. Settle here. And this time walk your feet towards your hands. Notice how the engagement is different. Exhale, fold. Inhale, roll up to extended mountain. Exhale, hands at heart. Inhale, arms over the head. And exhale, just drop your elbows down, claw your fingers, push the chest forward. So Squeezing the muscles in the back here. Inhale, re-extend. And exhale into a fold. Inhale into half lift. Exhale, fold. This time, inhale, drop your hips down. Sweep your arms all over the head. Utkatasana into chair pose. Sink your hips low. Press down through the feet. Draw your lower belly in. Sink your hips lower if you can. If your arms get tired, you can keep them in Anjali Mudra at your heart. So sink a little bit lower for another three, two, one. And as you exhale, come into a fold. Inhale, half lift. 
exhale into plank inhale hold exhale chaturanga inhale into your back bend exhale into down dog inhale step your right foot between the hands and drop your left knee down so you can stay with the back foot tucked or flat and allow the sing the hips to sink forward and down just a couple of breaths stay on the blocks if you wish and then with the next exhalation drop your hips back Ardha Hanumanasana so run is stretched right foot is flexed keep dropping the right hip down your lower abdominal muscles are in then inhale shift yourself forward and exhale step into plank inhale here exhale chaturanga inhale back bend exhale down dog left foot between the hands drop the right knee down again a couple of breaths here getting the hips used to the, ec the extension on one side keeping the weight evenly placed across the sides exhaling shift the hips back and observe what's different What's the same? Feel your breath. Then inhale, come back to your low lunge and exhale, step the back foot in and fold. Inhale, sink your hips low, Utkatasana, chair pose. External rotation of the shoulders, sink your hips low. Find length through the lower back and breathe. Inhale, straighten the legs and exhale, claw the fingers, drop the elbows down, pushing the chest forward. Inhale, extended mountain and exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, step into down dog. Inhale, right foot between the hands. Drop the back foot 45 degrees down, preparing for warrior one. Inhale, rise up and exhale, settle. Press through the outer edge of the left foot, pulling the left hip forward and dropping the right hip back. Take another inhale. And as you exhale, switch into warrior two. So the front heel meets the back of the arch in the back foot. Notice how that affects your hips, how you feel in the groin, the inner, inner legs, inner thighs. And bring your left hand behind you, either rest on your lower back or you can place it on top of the right thigh. Flip your right palm and then reverse your warrior so the weight is still on the front leg. Feet drop it lower and breathe. Look towards the right hand, weight evenly placed over the feet. Inhale, come back to warrior two, straighten the front leg. Tip your weight forward and then drop your right hand down. Maybe peace fingers wrap over the big toe. Stack your shoulders for Trikonasana. So press down through the feet. Find external rotation through the chest and equal length through both sides of the body. Keep breathing. Extend strongly through the left fingertips. And then windmill the left hand down, lift the back heel, step into plank. 
exhale chaturanga inhale back bend exhale down dog this time left foot between the hands drop the back heel down warrior one so inhaling rise and as you exhale cement the pose Draw your shoulder blades down towards your hips. Take another breath in. And as you exhale, change into warrior two. So take as much time as you need to to reposition. Your left knee is aiming towards the pinky toe side of the foot. And this time, right hand behind, flip the left palm up. Check that the weight is still where it should be, the left knee over the ankle, and then reverse your warrior. The core is engaged, find as much expansion through the left side of the body as you can. Breathing in through warrior two, straighten the front leg and fold into your triangle pose. So find a version that works for you. If you're resting your hand on the shin, you don't want to dump the weight there. It's the core that's supporting this and the legs that provide you with the foundation. Just roll out through the upper back. And inhaling, bring the right hand down. As you exhale, step into plank and chaturanga. Inhale into your back bend. And exhale into down dog. And then walk your hands towards your feet. Exhale, fold. Inhale, drop your hips down, sink into chest, surprise, <laughs> and settle here. Take another breath in, and as you exhale, fold. Moving into Pada Hastasana. So you can either just grab hold of the big toes or slide your hand underneath the foot so that your index finger is on the inside of the foot and all the other fingers are on the outside. So your toes kind of line up with the wrist crease. Inhale, lengthen through the spine and exhale, fold. So this isn't a version that everyone always goes for. Just see how it feels for you. It certainly helps you develop a certain level of trust and builds more effective communication channels between your ego and your body. <laughs> Inhale, lift up halfway, release the hands. Exhale, walk your hands into plank. Inhale, push the mat away and exhale into plank, uh, chaturanga. Inhale into your back bend. Exhale into down dog. <laughs> Look past your hands, feet together, and maybe this time as you inhale, you want to hop towards your hands. If not, then just step or walk. And exhale into fold. Inhale, rise up, extended mountain. Exhale, hands at heart, release. So like a coming home, close your eyes for a moment. Feel your body, feel your breath. Remind yourself of the intention you set at the beginning of the practice. Find some strength, some energy. Find your ujjayi breathing if you've lost it. And then open your eyes, inhale, extended mountain, exhale, into a fold. Inhale, half lift, and exhale, into down dog. 
This time inhale your right leg up, three-legged dog. Focus on rooting down through the left heel, but reach out through the right foot. Weight is evenly placed over the hands. Take another breath in. And as you exhale, knee to chest. Push the mat away, lift the knee as high as you can, and then gently step it between the hands. Or give yourself a helping hand if you need to. That's it. Stay on the fingertips. And as you inhale, straighten the front leg. The back heel can stay lifted. Press down through the big right toe. Notice what's going on in the leg. And then re-bend the front leg, keeping the hips low. So inhale, straighten the front leg. And exhale, re-bend. One more time, inhale. And exhale. This time, drop the back heel down. So you can either have the feet parallel and the legs, as, you know, the feet as wide as the hip, or the back heel is at 45 degrees out, coming into Parjvatanasana, the pyramid pose. You can stay on the blocks of the fingertips, hands at your hips, or you can come into secret prayer, bringing the hands together at the back. So like this between the shoulder blades. Don't worry if your hands don't want to go that way. So keep the spine long and either stay here or fold over the right leg. Your navel is close to the spine and surrender. So allow yourself to feel and take everything in that's happening. Keep the awareness of your body, of your breath. And then inhale, lift up all the way. Gently release the hands and bring them down. So from here, switch the back foot. So it's um, like for warrior two alignment. And we're gonna bend the front leg. So coming into a version of a side angle pose. You can keep the foot, the inner part of the leg. So on the block, if you want to, you can just stay up high, just keeping the gap between the ear and the shoulder nice and open. Or you can bring the hand on the outside of the foot. So then sweep the hand down and extend strong body line, strong energy line all the way from the outer edge of the left foot through the hips, through the side of the body, extending through the fingertips. Keep the arm nice and straight. But that's it. So then drop the left hand onto your hip. And if you have the hand on the outside of the leg, bring it by the inner part. So you can shorten the stance here if you want to. Pushing down through the right hand, lift the foot off the mat, bringing the knee towards the tricep. So coming into this like weird side plank, bringing the knee into the tricep. And then step outside of the hand and breathe. <laughs> We're going to do it twice more. So if you can't do it, it's fine. Just imagine doing it. Eventually, it will translate into something happening in the body. If you want to try, stabilize through the shoulder, push down through the hand, and lift the foot off the mat. <laughs> Keep it nice and steady. And step it. Outside of the hand, who's got, <laughs> who's got it in them for one more? <laughs> so prepare and then lift it up and then step outside. Spin, so lift the back heel and find your way into plank. Exhale into chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. 
Inhale, point your left foot and lift it up high, three-legged dog. Find your breath. Notice how your hips feel. With the next exhale, bring the knee to chest. Find your plank and then lightly step the foot between the hands. Settle here for a moment, drop your hips down. Back leg is active and then inhale, straighten the front leg. Exhale, rebend. Inhale, straighten, keep your hips square. Exhale, bend. So let's do it one more time. Inhale. And exhale. And then drop the back heel down, preparing for the pyramid pose. So you may want to shorten the stance, see what's right for you. And then hands on your hips, or if you're coming into reverse prayer, then you might want to lift up all the way. It's just easier to push the chest forward so the hands come together. Alternatively, you can just grab the opposite elbow. It helps you open through the shoulders this way. Push the right hip forward, left hip back, lengthen through the spine, and as you exhale, slowly descend. Keeping the top of the left thigh active, pressing down through the left big toe. No strain, no force, just feeling and breathing. Inhale, lift up all the way. Gently release your arms and rebend the front leg. Switch the back foot into warrior two alignment and just gauge with your hips. How do you want to take the side angle pose on this side? Maybe you need a block, maybe you don't. So wherever you are, keep the left knee over the ankle and then sweep the right hand down and up. Keep pressing down through the outer edge of the right foot. Your core is active. Feel the chest expanding in the right side as you breathe in. And then drop the right hand down. Left hand is by the inner left foot. And get ready. So stabilize through the shoulders. Shorten the stance if you need to and press down through the fingertips so you can lift the left foot off the mat. So hold it here in this weird plank variation and then step the foot outside of the hand. It's tough, isn't it? <laughs> I think stepping it back is harder than, um, than do getting into the pose. All right, twice more. So get ready, strong shoulders and then lift the foot. And then push the mat away, step the foot outside of the hand. One more time. So inhale, get ready, and exhale, transition. And then step it outside of the hand, bring the left hand down, frame the foot into plank. Exhale, chaturanga, inhale, up dog. And exhale into down dog. So settle here on child's pose. You're cool. Three rounds of breath. Just one breath at a time. And then walk your hands towards your feet. Exhale, fold. Inhale into chair, drop the hips down, extend through the arms. And exhale, fold. 
Once more, inhale, drop into chair, go as low as you can. And exhale, fold. Walk your hands forward into plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale into up dog. And exhale into down dog. Look past your hands. Step, walk or jump your feet towards your hands. And exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, Tadasana Samastiti here. Relax your arms. Inhale, into extended. Exhale, come into a fold. Inhale, half lift. And exhale, into down dog. Inhale, right leg up, three legged dog. Exhale, lightly step the foot between the hands. So stay here for a moment. Check how the weight is positioned. And then shift the weight forward and lift up into modified warrior three. So the weight is on the right leg, both legs are active. And you can stay here if you like, or grab hold of the back of the right leg or the heel and move into standing splits. So reaching the right left foot up, your core is active, the forehead is coming to the knee. Finding the balance between grace and grit. Slowly drop the back foot down, long step back. So land as though preparing for warrior two. Extend the right fingertips somewhere off the center line and shift your weight forward, extending into other Chandrasana or the half moon pose. So from one balance into another, engage the, the glutes, roll the chest out, and either stay here, or maybe you can lift your right hand off the mat. Maybe you bring it down straight away, it's fine. Then lower it down, Drop the back foot, step into plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, back bend. Broaden this through the collarbones. Exhale, into down dog. Inhale, left leg up, three-legged dog. Exhale, step it between the hands. So pause for a moment, and you can already use the left hand to grab the back of the left heel. So kind of aligning the forearm with the back of the calf and then shifting into your half standing splits. Or if you're going for the warrior three, it's perfectly fine too. Keep rooting down through the standing leg and extend through the right the right toes and slowly begin to bend the front leg and drop the back foot down settle as you land bringing the left fingertips of the center line getting ready for half moon so shift the weight forward and use the block close the whole hand <laughs> rotating the chest out you can either have the barbie foot, so pressing through the ball of the foot, or kicking out through the heel. Stay here, maybe lift the fingertips off the mat. And then bring the fingertips down, slowly land the back foot, 
Make your way into plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale into up dog. And exhale, down dog. So step whichever foot in front of, between the hands so you can spin and face the long edge of your mat. So as wide as it feels manageable. Again, use the block if you need to. Brace your core and lift up. So hands on your hips or arms extended. Mobilize the muscles in the inner thighs. Lengthen through the spine. And as you exhale, slowly leading with your chest like in all folds. Fold. Fold. So you can interlace the fingers and open through the shoulders. You can drop the top of the head down or just use your hands to support yourself. So building a deep and intimate sense of trust and friendship with ourselves when we remove the hands from the equation. And then release your hands. Prop yourself to lift up into flat back. And exhale, stay. Then spin, so the right leg is in the front. And this is where your props can come handy. So you can just do drop your knee down and move from half split into a low lunge. Or you can begin to open up through the hips and really don't push it, it's not worth it. Use a block or a couple, both a tower, <laughs> to support your hips. So you want the hips to be square. You don't want to roll one hip open. Lift your spine out of the pelvis and make yourself as comfortable as you can. So I like to just to prop one block underneath, but I know that using the blocks on each side and putting, using the arms to support your weight gives you that extra bit of comfort and control. If you feel adventurous, maybe you extend the arms over the head in Kali Mudra, so interlace all fingers, but index fingers. Maybe come into a minor, tiny back bend. Inhale back to the center. Release the arms. So push the mat away so you can tuck your back toes and see if you can spin to the other side. Don't worry if you can't, it takes time. And then again here, gauge how many blocks, how many props do you need? Oh, this is my less talkative side, <laughs> if that makes sense. So I'm probably going to use a couple of blocks or maybe two alongside. Make sure that right hip is down so you don't want to be like here. So kind of in like a box split. Meet yourself where you are. If you want to extend the arms over the head, interlace them the other way. Maybe come into a tiny back bend. Breathe faith and trust into your heart space. And then release the hands. Push the mat away, tuck your back toes. And whichever way you like, make your way down. I don't know why I spinned. <laughs> so much. <clears throat> Just move gently and slowly and come onto your back. Bring the knees towards your chest and give them a hug. Notice how your hips are feeling now. So no force, no muscular engagement, just gently holding onto the knees. Breathing into your lower back. And you can stay here or extend your legs up for modified Viparita Karani 
or if you want to come into halasana or plow pose with me if you don't remember how to do it just stay on observe first and then get into the pose because i don't want you to turn your head from side to side it's just too much for the neck so bend the legs and using some momentum lift the legs over you bring the hands onto your lower back to drop the legs and feet all the way to the floor so find a core engagement push down through the shoulders and try to find some inner peace and calm here because your diaphragm is constricted it's a lot harder to breathe so that's why you should try even harder to find your breath Remind yourself that everything's okay. Give your body a chance to just settle and enjoy the calming benefits of inversions. So when you're ready, bring the hands to the side of your hips and allow the legs to slide through if your head wants to lift allow it then resist it and then rest for a moment in constructive rest pose breathing deeply into your chest and exhalation releasing any tightness residual tension Either stay here or get ready for Shavasana. So if you've got an eye pillow, grab socks, blanket, whatever, and go get them. Slide the shoulder blades underneath the upper back. Keep the area between the ears and shoulders nice and open. Your palms are facing up to demonstrate your receptivity, like your openness and through your mind and heart that you're ready to receive. And bring your intention into mind. That's a passive observation. Check if anything has shifted, has changed, has transformed without placing value or a sense of quality. Touching base, acknowledging what's going on. And if everything feels the same, simply register a blank. We're not trying to make anything happen. Simply notice what's already here. taking deeper, more conscious breaths in.
avoid some movement into the body, whatever feels instinctive, whatever feels natural. When you're ready, roll over onto one side. So prop your head up with your arm like a pillow and spend a moment there reacquainting with your physical body, bringing your awareness back into your surroundings. And when you're ready, push yourself back into a comfortable seat. If you'd like to unmute yourself, then we can share the final chant together. If you want to stay muted. Perfectly fine. So returning to the seat. <coughs> Keep your eyes close and bring the hands at your heart. So feel that space where the thumbs touch the breastbone. Notice the opening as you breathe in and a sense of softening as you breathe out. And gently bow your head, thanking yourself and your body for the practice. And we can close this space with a round of OM. So we will inhale to OM. Take a deep breath in. vibrations to wash over you, feeling a deep sense of peace that you've created through some mindful movement and conscious breathing. You're connected, united, and when you're ready, open your eyes. Thank you very much for your practice with me today. Namaste. Let me know how your hips are feeling. If not today, maybe tomorrow. I'm really curious to hear and well done. <laughs> so we haven't done splits in a while, have we? No, so, no. Uh, <laughs> I think last time we did them was in the summer or something. So like, you know, fully get, getting into splits. So well done. Congratulate yourself for your efforts. And just when such poses are just thrown into the practice without, you know, being specifically geared towards them, it can feel a bit like, Oh, what's going on? So it was so it was going what's on. Going I was, on. I was, luckily you luckily muted me. I was muted me. What the hell, hell, is, hell is, is doing? doing? <laughs> well, I did say that rocket practice gets you to places you didn't expect to go. <laughs> the last the last minutes, minutes were. Well. Minutes ooh, well. ooh. <laughs> okay, good. So you broke a sweat. I turned on my I turned arm. Turned on my arm. Things are keeping the keep poses. Poses. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad that you pushed yourself you stepped out of the comfort zone so who knows what next week um holds <laughs> you know for you good stuff okay so if you have any questions please do ask if you want to you can always email me or get in touch you know instagram and stuff but otherwise i hope you have a lovely evening and i'll send you this practice because i bet especially you sandra you're dying to do it again right <laughs> I do the first I do the first minutes, forty minutes with pleasure, with pleasure. But I, but I, I was watching. I was the watching time the time from, from uh, under, you know, down, you know, down, 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 down the clock, clock there, there yeah. next to me. Next so to I was me, looking so to see. Oh, oh, it's twenty to seven. Hurry up! Hurry up! Good stuff. Okay, so have a lovely evening, guys. Thank you. Thank you. See you Tuesday, if not on Thursday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See ya. See ya. Bye.